Welcome. I'm Steve Hensley, the associate pastor here at First United Methodist Church. We welcome you to worship on this holy night of Christmas Eve. We're so glad you're joining us. We ask that you do pay attention throughout the service. There will be times that you will be reading along with us. There will be times that you will be singing along with us. You can follow those instructions on the bottom of your screen. Let us join together in worship now as we anticipate and as we celebrate. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to, to come together in this way to, to anticipate the coming of your child, to celebrate the light that comes into this world. Be with us this evening as we worship together, as we sing together, as we share together, as we celebrate together. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Isaiah 9, 2 through 7, in the King James Version. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. <clears throat> Thou hast multiplied the nation, and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice, when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it 
with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Advent hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us that we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set a flame to this Advent affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He is the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled. Our love is consummated. Our joy is complete. Our peace is sealed. Rejoice. A Savior is born. A Savior is born indeed. Joy to the world.
Hi, I'm Scott Sears. I hope that you're enjoying the music, the scriptures that are being shared with you on this Christmas Eve, uh, during this Christmas Eve service and the premieres. It's a joy for me to serve as one of the pastors at uh, First United Methodist Church in Huntington. It's especially a joy to be serving during this season, that even though our church is meeting uh, in a different way, I still feel the love, the presence, the support of those in our community of faith. Um, so tonight, as I share the word with you, I, I share just a single verse. Well, actually, not even a whole verse but it comes from John chapter one. 
verse 14. There it says, the word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory. That's the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, if nothing else uh, over this past period of time, we have become painfully aware of our bodies. Have we not? I mean, we've had to focus on keeping six foot distance between us and others. Every breath we take when we're in a public setting where there are others around is a breath that is, is filtered, filtered through cloth or some other substance. And if you're like me, it's been a battle, a battle over the past few months. You know, when we first entered this, this period of pandemic and, and knew we were going to have time away and things would be different, uh, I, I swore to myself I was going to lose 10 pounds, but I've gained five. I've got to admit it, folks, I'm, I'm just a slave to mashed potatoes. That's all there is to it. Painfully aware of our bodies during this period. This year, we've noticed our bodies, and, and, and we've longed for a way to be more spiritual, haven't we? Less stuck in the body, closer to God. And if you're like me, you feel the absence of not being able to come together as a church. And if you're like me, you've prayed more, you've meditated more, you've read more, and you've talked more. But still, it feels like this, this battle with the flesh, this battle to be more spiritual goes on. You know, just in the last couple of weeks, we've seen some hope for our feeble flesh in the form of a, a vaccine, or actually many of them. We still see those fateful numbers every day, but we've been offered hope. Hope in the form of vaccine. Yet that is not the greatest hope offered for our bodies, for our flesh, and our search for being more spiritual or more close to God. Our real hope? Well, that's what I just read to you from John's Gospel. The eternal, the divine, world-creating word we find speaking into existence all that is found in Genesis 1 became flesh. The Word became flesh and moved into our neighborhood. All things heavenly, spiritual, and eternal touched earth and took up residence in a human body in Jesus. You gotta admit, that's one odd thing for God to do. God is the anti-flesh. You know, we think of ourselves as, as carnal when we are furthest from heaven. So what's God do? God slipped in on a night long ago, took the very flesh we would love to have upgraded somehow, and became God among us, fully human, 
fully divine. That was Jesus' glory, John says. That God became human. What does that mean? <laughs> well, at the very least, it means that if you're going to meet this God, this God that we worship on Christmas Eve, you're going to have to do it now, and you're going to have to do it in the flesh. Because that's where God is. You want to worship this God? Or you're going to have to do it in the flesh. Worship the God made flesh. You do it here, now, as we are, as human beings. We can quit the fight against our flesh. We can quit it because of what Jesus has done this night. People are especially searching on Christmas Eve to be more spiritual. And the response is, you want to see God? Then look in the flesh. God didn't come to save us from it, but to redeem it. To redeem it, just as we are. Now, I struggled with some way to, to tell this wonderful story we want to hear this day that makes sense and ties together this idea of us being people and God's Word being made flesh. So, I enlisted some helpers. Hi, I'm Erin Bradley. Hello, everybody, and Merry Christmas from Ireland. My name is Tyler Eden. Good morning, this is Ann Tebbets. Hi, this is Carrie Tanner in Boulder, Colorado. Hi, I'm Julie Kendoff. I'm Scott Eblen. We're Charlie and Barb Yost. Hi, this is Jean Ann Rutherford. Hi, I'm Bob Ganser. My name is Martha Fish. Hi, I'm Vicki Buell. I'm uh, Leslie Fish. I'll be reading, reading from Luke, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, from the New Revised Standard Version. I shall be reading from Luke 2, 1 through 20, from the King James Version. And I'm reading to you Luke 2, 1 through 20, from the King James Version. And I'm reading to you today from the King James Version, the book of Luke, chapter 2, and Luke 2, the second chapter, the first 20 verses. of the King James Version. And I'll be reading Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, of the King James Version. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with, his, with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, Praising God and saying, Glory to God, Glory Glory to God, 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 God in the and on earth, and earth peace among men. And, and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, but found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told of them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. You see, God is among us to redeem us. To redeem us even when we can't be together. That is the glory of Christmas Eve. The Word became flesh and lived among us. Amen.
Thank you.